So I have just finished working probably the hardest I've ever worked in a week. We're talking proper like 3 a.m. finishes for about nine days straight, including over the weekend. And having made a video a couple of weeks ago about how I felt tired and overwhelmed, that was a real struggle for me. But I kind of wanted to share in this video the core habits, these non-time consuming, simple things that I really tried to focus on doing to make sure that I stayed as happy and healthy as I could throughout that really tough period. And so many of you responded to that video where I shared kind of candidly my feeling of being overwhelmed and just exhausted saying that you felt exactly the same. And that really made me feel like I wasn't alone, but it also made me think like how many people around the world right now are sat at their desks feeling exactly the same, like they just have no motivation and they kind of aren't really taking that good care of themselves. I think when we're in this kind of frame of mind where, you know, you just have no motivation, you can't be bothered really to do very much, it's important that we just focus on like, what are these core habits? Not how am I gonna do this two hour morning routine, but what are the small things that I really need to focus on? And so in this video, I'm hoping I'll share nothing hugely groundbreaking, but just the things that I think we all need to be reminded of and kind of focus on when we're going through a bit of a difficult patch. So Beth and I have both put our own tips into this video, as well as digging into the science of what really works and the things we should both probably be doing more of. And we're gonna finish up with some top tips on how to make your workspace somewhere you really want to be. First up, let's talk about how we fuel our bodies. And I think we all know the importance of what we eat and drink. But when I'm crazily busy like I was last week, I find that food very quickly slips down my list of priorities. It's like food no longer becomes something that's really important for me to do or focus on because I have so much else going on. And so I end up often feeling like, oh, I'll just buy a quick kind of takeaway meal or, oh, I will push lunch back and back and back and it'll get to 4 p.m. and I haven't had lunch. You enter this kind of vicious cycle of unhealthy eating, I guess. And the impact of kind of going through these cycles where you don't eat for ages because you're really busy and then binge eat because you're absolutely starving is more than just physical. It also has a huge impact on our mood and mental well-being. So I watched, I think it was a TED talk a couple of years ago all about this. And the one thing that really stuck in my mind is this idea that there are certain foods, particularly those that are really high carbohydrate and high sugar foods, which cause our blood glucose levels to very quickly rise. So we get this sudden spike in energy, but almost too much energy so that we find it difficult to focus. And then off the back of that, we get this sudden dip in our energy levels, meaning that we feel lethargic and can't really be bothered to do much. And so when I'm kind of eating, I try to keep that in mind and think about how, you know, I need to be eating foods that if I eat carbs, that's absolutely fine, but just don't eat tons of them. Or if I have kind of some high sugar biscuits or sweets with my coffee, that's fine, but like don't have tons. So I get this spike and drop. So the main points here are first of all, that when you're crazily busy, make sure you don't forget to eat. And on the flip side of that second, make sure that your portion sizes don't get huge. They aren't full of tons of carbs and high sugars that give you these peaks and troughs in your blood sugar levels. And third of all, I think if you have slightly smaller meals, you can then afford to kind of enjoy that mid morning snack or mid afternoon snack. And at those times, you know, particularly in the mid afternoon where I'm prone to a sudden slump, I like to try and eat these kind of low glycemic index foods. So that's stuff like apples, oranges, or nuts. The other really important component here is somewhat obviously staying hydrated. It's drinking water. And I think my top tip here is really just, you know, I always have a glass of water sat on my desk with a coaster on my desk. So if you buy yourself a coaster and just get used to like always having a glass of water there, then when there isn't one there or it's empty, you'll kind of realize that you haven't drunk. I think when we're really busy, it's so easy. If you don't have a glass of water ever on your desk, you kind of don't realize it's not there. But by kind of getting into a habit of just always having a glass of water there for you, it will mean you drink way more and stay hydrated. In terms of the science here, like just a 2% drop in hydration levels significantly impairs performance in tasks that require attention, coordination, and memory. 
And as a final tip, Beth is really rubbish at drinking water. So she often will like put lemon bits in her water because she finds that kind of makes it taste better and just gives her an incentive to like want to drink water. Or she also got a soda stream for Christmas so that she can kind of make fizzy water. Any way you can basically force yourself to stay hydrated go for it. And the last thing I want to say on this topic is that I think I often feel guilty drinking coffee, but Beth and I did some research into this this week and it turns out having one or two cups a day can actually improve memory and increase mental function and also turns out releases dopamine which can make us feel happier. So probably best to stick away from having 20 cups a day, but one or two, not too bad. So the next thing I want to talk about is exercise and specifically doing exercise first thing on a morning. Now as a student I was always able to kind of do exercise whenever I wanted and so I never really got into a routine of doing it first thing on a morning but having started work both Beth and I have found that our time to kind of do exercise especially as the day goes on is much more limited than it ever was. And so we've committed like rigidly to ourselves in the Done app, trying to do at least five bits of exercise a week. And that can be just a 10 minute workout first thing on a morning, or it can be a quick walk for me, or you know, a bit of yoga. Whatever it is, just do something that first thing on a morning that wakes you up and kind of starts the day with some mobility. And as you may have noticed, if you've watched any of my previous videos, Beth is most certainly not a morning person. But actually, I think she's found that by committing to just doing a very small amount of exercise, but very regularly, it's been something she's really been able to get into and stick to where if she'd said, you know, I'm going to do twice a week, 30 minutes of exercise, likelihood is that when we were both busy, we probably wouldn't have stuck to it. So yeah, pick a small amount and do it regularly. And I think beyond that, also try to see doing exercise first thing on the morning as an investment. You're gonna get out of it, according to a 2006 study, loads of benefits from neurotransmitters like dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, and those are gonna make you more productive when you do get to work. So that 10 minutes is actually gonna end up making you more productive and saving you time in the long run. So when it comes to exercise, absolutely the most important thing is that it fits in with your own personal personal schedule so that you're able to stick to exercising regularly. However, there are a couple of studies that have shown that specifically early morning exercise is particularly beneficial, even if it's only a very small amount. It's been shown to reduce blood pressure in one study by around 10%. And another 2015 study showed that morning exercise improved fat oxidation, so that's fat burning, over exercise done at other times. And all of these kind of habits and tips I've been sharing are things that keep me happy and healthy. And another thing that makes me happy and healthy is feeling like I'm constantly learning and growing. And for that, I use Skillshare, today's sponsor. Skillshare taught me how to edit my videos when I was first starting out on YouTube with their amazing classes on Final Cut Pro, as well as their online learning community to help answer my questions. One of the best courses I've taken recently was Thomas Frank's course, Productivity for Creatives. It's massively helped me up the quality of my videos, I think, and be more consistent where I previously had struggled to post regularly. So yeah, as part of investing in myself, I often dedicate time to learning new things on Skillshare, whether that be editing sweet Instapics or living more sustainably. Skillshare has enabled me to connect with fellow creatives and motivated me to never stop learning. I personally have been subscribed to Skillshare, as I say, for a year and a half now, so I'm really excited to have them as a sponsor. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, and after that, it's really affordable at just $10 a month. Plus, very excitingly, I have my own Skillshare class coming out soon, so stay tuned for that. So the final thing that I try to prioritize when I'm crazily busy is keeping my workspace as tidy and comfortable as possible. In a 2010 study conducted by researchers at the University of Exeter, it was found that in an office environment, workers who had control over their workspace, who made it personalized, were not only healthier and happier, but also up to 32% more productive. And in another study conducted in 2011 at Princeton, researchers effectively found that clutter reduces 
its focus. So the point here between these two studies is that people produce the highest quality work when they're in a space that's tidy and where they feel comfortable. And although desk setup videos are crazily popular on YouTube, and you should of course check mine out, I think that is mainly among students because it seems to me that there's this real culture within workplaces of kind of not having like a really cool setup and not investing in your work gear. It's like this thing where we feel like we need to make work painful rather than pleasurable. And for me, I just find it really strange and I think there should be no shame in spending like a good bit of money investing in the space you spend the vast majority of your life. So here are my top six tips for making your workspace basically somewhere where even when you're insanely busy and working 16 hour days like I was last week, you feel as healthy and happy as possible. First up, get an external monitor. So I got mine when I was a student for about a hundred pounds. And I've got to say like, it made me wonder why I'd spent seven years hunched over a laptop. You might also be able to expense them if you work for a company. Second, make sure that your screen or your screens are correctly positioned. So they should be roughly arm's length away from you and the top should be at around eye level. Also, I think it's worth bearing in mind that even if you can't afford a monitor, you could buy a laptop riser or you could have your laptop riser alongside one monitor or you could go for a full two screen setup with some kind of arm like I have now. Third, try to look after your posture. It's so easy to hunch over. Again, a monitor will help with this. You might also like to increase the size of everything on your screen. So I have my window screen for work set at 125% and I also think it's well worth investing in a decent quality chair. Fourth, look after your eyes. So I think it's well worth investing in a desk lamp or two, and perhaps also a pair of blue light glasses. Both of these will reduce eye strain and generally kind of make it that much more pleasurable experience if you sat in front of a screen all day. Fifth, stay mobile while you're working. So a few ideas here, you might like to invest in a sit stand desk or more simply just get up and go and stretch every couple of hours. And finally, I like to put a golf ball under my desk that I roll my foot on. And John Ratey in his book, Spark, talks about the idea of having your mind doing something other than the work you're focused on, which has been shown to improve uh, the levels of dopamine and uh, norepinephrine, and also therefore increase focus. And last but not least, try to incorporate some lovely greenery into your workspace. And that same 2010 Exeter study from earlier show that having a house plant or an office plant in your workspace can increase well-being by up to 47% and that seems like a very high number that is a lot of happiness from this 30 pound investment but I've got to say I do think Lily makes me 47% happier so when we're crazily busy or when we feel demotivated we need to prioritize all the stuff I've talked about in this video and make sure that we're looking after our own physical and especially mental well-being. Otherwise, working hard for a very short period just won't be sustainable. And on top of that, another study has shown that when we're happy, we are around 13% more productive. So even when we're crazily busy working insanely hard, making sure that we do these small things to make us happier is essential to making sure that we continue to work effectively. And if you enjoyed this video and want more information on how I make my desk look beautiful and my workspace somewhere I love to spend time, most of the time, then do go and check out my desk setup video.